let's look at the God's General series from Robert's Learn. If you have not gotten this book, I suggest that you do it. I spent a year of my life in my 20s ingesting this to try to find out how does a mighty move of God happen? How do you get to be anointed in ministry? How do you see powerful move of God with signs and wonders? And I didn't get it at the time as I was studying this. But these heroes of the charismatic faith were not fully mature. And these ministries all ended pretty much in failure and controversy. So let's look. John Alexander Dowie had a powerful healing ministry where people came from all over the world to Chicago to be part of his church and his school. But it ended in doctrinal errors and even heresies. Maria Woodworth Etter, which came out of John Alexander Dowie's ministry, had powerful ministry and was an unprecedented woman preacher at that time where there were no women preachers. But she had people going into these trances and these trances led to all sorts of doctrinal errors based on those trances and it derailed the movement. Evan Roberts, he had one of the greatest ri revivals in, in, in the country with the Welsh and the revival sh basically spanned the whole entire country. But he had a nervous breakdown after the revival and never turned to ministry and spent his life in obscurity. Charles Parham and William Seymour joined together to start the great Azusa Street revival that we all love to talk about that started in a ho basically a, a horse stable and basically had <laughs> bales of hay to be the pulpit but it ended up transforming the world and starting the, the modern charismatic Pentecostal movement. But their, end, their ministry ended with both of them splitting because of doctrinal errors, and they never repaired their relationship. Many years after the revival, William Seymour disappeared, and people are not really even sure where he went to this day, never to emerge. John G. Lake, known for signs and wonders, and a lot of the modern charismatic people like to use his name, but all of his kids rejected Jesus. And his son, who took over his ministry, was arrested for a spiritual Ponzi scheme. Amy Simple McPherson had one of the largest mega churches in her day, and which all the Hollywood stars attended. She was even on the cover of Time magazine. She started a denomination called the Foursquare Church, but ended up that her church had some type of crazy kidnapping scheme where she got kidnapped. And it's caused a controversy and her ministry never recovered. William Brennan, another person people like to use in the charismatic movement, moved in great prophetic powers, could basically read your mail backwards and forwards, but he ended up separating from Gordon Lindsay, who was the backbone, and his ministry never recovered. It floundered. He died in a tragic car accident, and his ministry ended in major doctrinal errors, even heresies. Jack Coe, another one, had the largest revival tent in America other than Oral Roberts. But Kenneth Hagin warned him that if he did not make changes in his life, he would die. And, tr and Jack tragically died at the age of 35 from a heart attack because he didn't make those changes. A.A. A. Allen had two million recorded miracles. How do we know this? Because people wrote letters to his ministry telling of the healings they received as a result of his ministry. But A.A. A. Allen ended his ministry in major doctrinal errors and even heresies. Catherine Kuhlman. Same thing, saw two million miracles recorded in her day, but was divorced, and her ministry had lawsuits for financial mismanagement to the tune of $1 million. And at the time of her death, her, her, the ministry was seriously in jeopardy because of these lawsuits. She worked herself into the grave by doing more ministry, and she died of heart disease in the prime of her ministry. She actually died in, at ORU at their hospital, which was a part of my seminary, which is now closed. And the last was Smith Wigglesworth, the only one of God's generals that had ended well. He is said to have raised 21 people from the dead, and he died in his 90s at a good old ripe age. Was the only one who did not end his ministry in controversy or failure. The charismatic movement has not learned these lessons from the past. And even as we're seeing now with the Mike Bickle situation, people are not learning the lessons. We think we could just move forward, that it's under the blood of Jesus, that we're new creations in Christ, that we could move forward and sweep everything under the rug, never addressing the larger issues within the charismatic culture.